Okay, we start off with running in place. So I'm gonna crank that down a little bit so you can see my feet, or more of my feet anyway. Punches. Keep your hands up, keep your feet moving. I do jab, cross, hook, uppercut just because that makes sense to me. You don't have to. You can do anything you want with your hands. You can throw ridge hands or back fists or elbows if you want to, as long as you keep your hands up and you keep moving because it's a warm up. If you stop and think about what you're going to do and stop moving your feet, then you're not warming up anymore. Okay, we're going to shuffle side to side. I get my shuffle with more space to shuffle back here. And then knees. Make sure when you do this that your standing knee stays bent. Not because it's better technique, but because you're doing more work that way. This is a warm up. Other side. Then we can do lunge front kick. I step, if you step back to lunge, then it comes right up for the front kick. Alternating legs. And kicks front side back. Okay, just because you're doing this as a warm up doesn't mean you can forget your technique. So I'm still pushing on the front kick, turning my standing foot away from the target on the side kick, talking to you so I keep tipping over. Okay, so that was six exercises. I want you to run through that set two more times, so 30 seconds each. Run, punches, shuffle with punches, knees, lunge, front kick, kicks. Then again, run, punches, shuffle and punch, knees, lunge and kick, and front side back kick. Then when you come back, you're gonna stop the video, do them again, or repeat and do them again, I don't care. Okay, then when you come back, we're gonna stretch. Start here, reach up, over to one side, other side, and straight out to the front. Reach for the floor. Over to one side, drag your ankle, pull your chest to your knee, chin is up, and then down in a side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Make sure that your foot is out past your knee. If you want a little bit more stretch, put this elbow inside the knee and push it open. Straighten out your legs, chin up, back is flat, reach your chest down towards your front knee. You should feel this primarily in the hamstring of your front leg. You might also feel it a little bit in the calf of your back leg. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees out. 
Other side, grab your ankle. <coughs> Down in the side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Chin up, back flat, stretch your hamstring. Have a seat. Feet straight out in front of you. I'm going to take one foot, cross it over the other knee. Whichever foot I have up, I'm going to take the opposite arm, put my elbow outside the knee, push across while I take my upper body and look in the opposite direction. Other side. And feet out. <clears throat> Reach over to one side, grab your toes. Keep this foot, keep your knee, knees down, keep this foot on the floor, keep your both butt cheeks on the floor. Reach over to the, to the other foot. Other side. Come up. Make sure your toes are pointing straight up. Lift your chin. Reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your feet in. Pull your toes back as far as they'll go. Ideally, grab your toes and pick your heels off the floor. If you can't do that, if you can't reach your toes, okay, pull your toes back as far as they'll go. Don't round your back here. Look at the angle of my back. I'm pushing my shoulders forward, and then I'm going to hinge forward for my hips. You should feel this down the back of your legs. You really shouldn't be feeling it. Maybe a little bit in your tailbone, but you shouldn't be feeling this up your back. Pull your feet in. Heels on the floor. Put your, for now, put your knees inside your elbows. Push them out. Rock back and forth. Then just bring your elbows back out so you can drop your butt. Hands down, straighten out your legs. Okay, then we have three exercises to do. Each one of them, I'm going to show you. And then you're going to go back and you're going to do each one for another minute. The first one is, is a series of squats. I'm going to angle this down even a little bit more because the toe, the angle of your toes is what makes these squats different. Okay, we have two horse stances. We have a toes in horse stance, and we have a toes at 45 horse stance. We're gonna do squats in both of those. We're gonna start toes together, reach down, touch the floor. When I do this, I'm not sticking my butt out. I'm keeping my shoulders over my hips. Then I turn my toes out at 45 and squat again. So toes in, toes out. Toes in, toes out. Okay, the next one is dips. I think, yep, that's what I wrote down, dips. Okay, so when you do a dip, <clears throat> Ideally, you put your hands on the floor so that your fingers are facing your toes. Ideally, you would have your palms down straight like this. My elbows don't bend enough to do that. I have to come up on, on um, fingertips. If you need to do it on knuckles, that's okay too. Or if you have like push-up bars, that works. But you gotta come here and you gotta pick your butt up. This is not a dip. This is an upper body exercise. It's a core exercise too because your core is what keeps your hips up. But it's primarily triceps, so my elbows are bending. They're not bending out, they're bending straight back. So it's sort of like an inverted push-up. Okay, and one last exercise. This one is a, it's a full crunch. So you start here, 
my my tailbone's on the floor, my shoulder blades are just, just touching. I'm going to pull in and out. Okay, so I want you to go back and I want you to do a minute of each of those. A minute of the squats, toes in, toes out. A minute of dips and a minute of full crunches. And then when you come back, we will continue. Okay, this whole month we're working on focus. Today we're gonna work on focusing on the parts of some kicks. Okay, so we're gonna start with a front kick. And when you do a front kick, we, you, you need to have your hips square to your target and your shoulders square to your target. I tend to turn my standing foot a little bit corner-wise. Reason for this is if I have my toe facing straight forward and I hit something straight in front of me and it's bigger than me, it's going to push me straight back over that foot. But if I've got my foot turned off to the corner a little bit, then I have a little bit more leverage against whatever I'm hitting. The problem with that is if you're not careful, turning your foot off to the corner turns your hips off to the corner. Your hips and your shoulders still have to be straight to your target. Okay, so we're gonna come forward with back leg front kicks. You're gonna chamber your kick, you're gonna hit with the ball of your foot, re-chamber, and put your foot down. Okay, right now, we're not working on power, we're working on focus. So I want you to focus on your target, and in a few minutes, I'm gonna give you a target. Okay, but you're gonna start here, turn the standing foot a little bit, make sure when you chamber that your hips and your shoulders stay square to the target, kick, re-chamber, set it down. And we're gonna come forward, Okay, if you need to, do this, set your, set, a, a, you know, your, do this on your iPad and set your phone next to it or something so you can watch yourself in the video and make sure that you're square or do it in the mirror or have someone watch you and make sure that you stay square. Other things to think about are not dropping your foot. Rechamber is what lets you set your foot down and be lined up, be ready to go with balance for the next kick. Okay, so front kicks, do a few sets front and back. Then we're gonna do back leg roundhouse kicks. So you do your back leg roundhouse kick. I want you to pretend you're a little dragon and turn your standing foot 90 degrees before you start. Then you're gonna pick your knee up of the back leg, point it forward as if you were gonna do a front kick. Then you're gonna rotate your hips to that side and your standing foot all the way to the back as you throw the kick. Okay, so <clears throat> standing foot, if I leave my standing foot here when I throw the kick, my hips rotate. I mean, yeah, my hips rotate, my foot rotates. My hips rotate, my foot does not. My knee gets caught in the middle. So everything has to rotate. This is much easier. Um, in stocking feet on a wooden floor. It's much harder to do out on the pavement in shoes, which is why I suggest you turn your foot halfway before you start. Okay, the roundhouse kick chamber does not swing around. It comes up as if you're gonna do a front kick and then it rotates. If I was doing a front leg roundhouse kick, I would bring my knee right up here and chamber. But because it's gonna come from the back leg, now you're gonna come from here and then rotate. Okay, so start here, turn the foot, knee up, rotate and kick. Turn the foot, and if you have to, pretend you're a little dragon and say, turn the foot, knee up, rotate and kick. Turn the foot, knee up, rotate and kick. Turn the foot, knee up, rotate and kick. Okay, so we did our front kick. Our whole front of our body was facing the target when we actually threw the kick. With the roundhouse kick, the whole side of your body is facing the target when you connect with the kick. So why does it smell like something's burning? Hopefully that's outside. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with a side kick. Okay, I have to turn my air filter up a little higher because I can smell a fire. Um, people next door are burning and I just as soon not have to go to the ER. So um, 
I will try to talk a little bit louder. You might have to crank the volume up, but I have to have my air filter running to get rid of the smoke smell. Okay, so we're gonna do a side kick now. Um, and when you do your side kick, we're gonna do a front leg side kick because I want you to be able to see where I'm going with this. Okay, so I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna slide up. So the foot that's sliding up, I'm gonna turn my toes ideally straight to that wall, at the very least 45 there. And then I'm gonna bring my foot up as if it was on a step in front of me. Then I'm gonna turn this foot so that the toes, if they're not already there, they turn the rest of the way. And with the, my heel, I'm gonna push into the target, okay? So, look at my foot. A lot of you guys are turning your side kick this way. Side kick needs to be done this way. So when I do my roundhouse kick, the side of my body's facing the target. When I do my side kick, you're actually got the edge of the back of the body. Toe up tends to turn the front of your body towards the target. Toe down turns your butt and your hamstring towards the target. And those are the strong muscles that you want to be using for the side kick. So we're going to start here. We're going to slide up, knee up, push and kick. Slide up, knee up, push and kick. I know you all know how to do side kick, but I want you to break it down like this. Slide up, kick, slide up, kick. Then we're gonna do it on the other side. Slide up, kick, slide up, kick, slide up, kick. Okay, now, I need you to set up a set of targets. Okay, so I got two chairs. I didn't plan this out as well as I thought. Okay, so I have two chairs, and they have a rope between them. Okay, if you don't have a rope, you can use something else. You can use um, a piece of string, you can use a piece of yarn. Um, but we're gonna practice, we're gonna focus on the piece of rope, and we're gonna throw our kicks over. So I'm gonna, what, I can't cheat on my kick here. I have to bring my foot up, kick over, in and down, so one, with the front kick that we did first. Two, three, four, five. And then the other leg. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're gonna to switch to a roundhouse kick. Okay, if you're standing way back here, it's really easy to, to chamber your kick. Okay, be, to, to miss the rope. I want you to start not more than, so if you're standing foot's not more than like two feet. If you're shorter than that, be closer. And so I want you to have to pull your foot in as your knee comes up. So one, two, three, four, five. Same thing on the other side. One, two three, four, five, and then the side kick. So then we're gonna do one more thing after that. So I'm gonna start here, side kick chambers. One, two, three, four, five. And then side kick on the other side. And I want you to make sure you're bringing your foot up this way. It's not just sweeping up. That's where you're going to hit the rope. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're going to do one more set of roundhouse kicks. We're going to do back leg roundhouse kicks. So you're going to start here, turn the foot, bring your knee up. So you got to get your toe higher than the rope and rotate and kick. That's one, two, three, 
four, five. And the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you can put your chairs away and we will move on to some more curriculum. Okay, so we're going, I'm going to run through each of the forms one time and then we're going to pick a technique out of each one of those forms to use as a drill. So if you're a white belt, you're doing the white belt form over and over until I get to the end of the forms. If you're a green belt, you're doing your form over and over until I get to the end of the black belt forms. Okay, so we start with basic form two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. That's from the white belt curriculum. Okay, from the Beginner curriculum, tungsten are orange and blue. We're going to do Kiang on Shogun. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one. Two, three, four, one, two, one, two. So if you're a beginner, you're doing those two forms over and over. Um, advanced class, Chil Sun E Row. One, two, one, three. Four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, <clears throat> one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. One, two, <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> if you're a gap, if you're in, in the advanced class, those three forms. Um, first degree black belt, row high. One, two, three, four, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, and second and third degree black belts pill song. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Three, four, one, 
two, three, one. There's a window open. That's why there was smoke in my house. So back to here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four. Putter. Okay, so I'd like you to do, um, if you're a GUP, you've done your form a bunch of times. If you're a black belt, I'd like you to stop the video and do your form two or three more times. Okay, then we're going to pick some techniques out of those forms. So, get your chairs back for a moment get the kicks at the beginning. And from row I, we're going to do a crescent kick. Now you do a crescent kick, your foot's going to come up. This actually is the front leg crescent kick. Your foot comes up and it chambers and it's going to come right back to your knee. And you can't drop it till it's back to your knee. Otherwise, you're going to get hooked on the rope. So you do front leg crescent kick. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then from um, Pilsan, we're going to do a back leg front kick as you choke. Okay, so you've got someone's neck and the hand is here. So you got to throw the kick properly as you pull their head in and still remember to re-chamber and not get hung, because it's really easy to get so focused on the hand that you, you get hung up. Okay, so we're gonna start here. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you put the chairs away. And from, you're gonna get a piece of paper and you're gonna get somebody to take the paper and put an X in the middle of it, okay? Then they're going to hold it, you need a piece of paper. Got a piece of paper? Yeah. They're gonna hold it at this angle. And you're gonna always pretend that it's the underneath of somebody's throat, okay? And you're gonna throw forearms to their throat. So you wanna be hitting with this part of your arm right to where the X is drawn on the paper. Okay, it should probably be held, I'm holding it high, it should probably be held about the height of your, safe, of your throat, assuming that the person who's attacking you is the same height as you are. Okay, so you're gonna come in and you throw one, two. I'm rotating my hips. Three, four, five. And then same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's from basic form two. Then from hitting on showdown, you're gonna have your partner hold the paper. If I'm standing this way, my partner's gonna hold the paper about here. And we're going on the assumption that they're throwing a kick at my knee. So I have to hit with this part of my hand. And I am hitting, really, whatever part of their leg I get. But if they're throwing a roundhouse kick, it's probably going to be right about here. So I'm here. I'm going to chamber my hand, settle my weight, and block the strike to my knee. Except there's going to be a target there. It's going to be a piece of paper. So one, two, three four, five, 
And then same thing on the other side. They're going to take the paper over there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then the technique that we're going to practice from peeing on, from chill site Ero, you know what this is going to be. This is my pet peeve. Okay. Um, I'm just going to crank the camera down a little bit so you can see my feet better. Choi Hagan Chasi means lowest stance. It does not necessarily mean butt on the floor stance. It's the lowest stance you can get to. But your back has to be straight. Okay, so if this is as low as you can get, that's okay. But if this is as low as your legs get and you bring your hands here because you think you're supposed to be on the floor, you're inviting somebody to knee you in the face or drop an ax kick on the back of your head. Okay, so I'm going to start here. I'm in Chingle Chassis. I'll show it to you in both directions. Chingle Chassis. Shoi Hadan, uh, Soko Rip Chassis. Shoi Hadan Chassis. My back is still straight. Back through Soko Rip. Back to Chingle Chassis. So from the front, it's here. Chingle Chassis. Soko Rip. Shoi Hadan Chassis. Soko Rip. Chingle Chassis. And from the back, Chingle Chassis. Soko Rip Chassis. Shoi Hadan Chassis, Soko Rip Chassis, Jingle Chassis. Okay, I want five on each side. Okay, we're gonna pick three self-defenses, one from the white belt curriculum, one from the beginner curriculum, one from the advanced curriculum. And each one that we do, we're gonna focus on what part of your body you're using to hit with and what part of your attacker's body are you hitting. Okay, so the first one that we're gonna do is double wrist grab from behind. So somebody press, and I am going to step back as I punch out. So my hand is going to turn up, palm down as I punch out, and I'm stepping back so that my butt is crashing into this part of the hip. We're always assuming that your attacker is about the same size as you are. Okay, so that my butt is crashing into this part of their hip and breaking their balance. So I'm here, I step back, I punch out. And I come back and I elbow them in the solar plexus. Okay, solar plexus, follow your ribs to where they meet. Right underneath that is solar plexus. That's the target. You're hitting with your elbow, but you're not hitting with this. If you hit with that, you're going to get hurt. You're hitting with this. Okay, so I'm here. They grab. I step back. I break their balance. I break their grip. I elbow their solar plexus. I grab their hand. So they have, I have their, their hand in my left hand. So my right foot's going to step off to the opposite corner. I turn them over, so now they're here. I'm going to throw a punch either to their floating ribs or right up to the armpit where there's a lot of nerves and blood vessels. And then I'm going to throw a round house kick either to the face or to the ribs, whatever I reach, depending on how far down they're pulled. Okay, so here, step back. Do the release, elbow, grab the hand, step, turn them over, punch under the arm or the floating ribs, round house kick to the face. Okay, so that's from the beginner self defense. Um, I would like you to practice these self defenses with me and then find somebody in the house that you can do them with. And you're not going to be hitting them with any kind of power, but I want you to walk through them with somebody and actually put your hands on them where you, or your feet where you would be hitting them if they were an attacker. Okay, the second one that we're doing is the pell grab with a hook punch. Okay, so somebody grabs my lapel and they're throwing a punch at my head. I'm going to trap the, um, the hand that's grabbed. That one's really not a threat. Punch is coming from that side. I gotta get my head out of the way. I'm actually gonna step back, which is gonna pull them off balance because I have their hand trapped. And I'm gonna punch over the hand that's trapping me and block, so I'm not really punching, I'm coming across with the block. This part of my arm is catching their arm where they're doing the hook punch. And then I'm gonna come down and drop my elbow into the crease of their arm. If they're holding on and I'm tight and I've got them trapped, there's a good chance I'll hurt fingers here. And then I'm gonna come up with my fist, two first knuckles, right up under their chin with an uppercut. Okay, so trap, step back and block, break some fingers, break some teeth. And then the third one is um, 
shoulder grab with wrap around. Okay, so this is it's it's like a lapel grab, they're grabbing your shoulder, but there's no punch here. But I'm still gonna trap and I'm gonna step back. Because if they decide to throw a punch, I've stepped back, so my head is not a target. So here I trap and step back, they come together. My hand comes up to the front. I, a lot of people bring their hand up and go right to the wrap. Unless you have really flexible shoulders and your partner's pretty close to your size, you're not going to come up in the right spot under the elbow. So I'm going to come up to the front and then I'm going to drop my weight and take my elbow and, and drop it into the crease of their elbow. Then I continue around the back and I come up so my bicep is right under their elbow. And at that point when I do this, I dislocate their shoulder and their elbow. Okay, so here, I want to do it so it turns this way. Trap step back, the hand comes up to the front. It drops down into their elbow, continues around behind, comes up under their elbow, break, and then whatever other rounds you need. Okay, if you are Tom Shido beginner, you're doing single stick. Everybody else single stick is a review for you, so you need to do this. Uh, but we're gonna talk today, we're gonna focus on what your target is, what you're hitting. Okay, first thing I want you to think about when you hold your stick, hand at the bottom, left hand at the bottom, right hand over it, so that you've got the butt end of the stick out, so that you have this end as a weapon, and this end is also a weapon. So this is just a courtesy, and I step back, and I cover my head. So I want you to do this with the video playing, or in the mirror, so that you can see. See how far my stick is out? If it's back here, it's not covering my head. If it's like this, it's not covering my head. It's gotta be out here and it's angled down. So if someone hits it, their stick slides down. If I have it this way and their stick slides down, it's gonna hit my fingers and they're not gonna be happy. Okay, so I step back, I protect my head. When we do this with a partner, we're hitting their stick. But I want you to think about what your target should be on the person right now. Okay, so right here, I'm hitting either the temple or the side of the neck. Inside of the knee, face. Comes all the way around. I hit the temple or the side of the neck again. I follow, I cover my head in case they're trying to hit me. And then I'm gonna come down and I'm going to hit from the, I'm gonna hit their collarbone and drag it all the way across their body. And then I'm gonna put, I'm going to switch hands. I'm going to, I have my right foot forward. I'm gonna pump with my left leg, front kick with my right, step back with my right foot. Okay, so now you can follow along with me on the other side. I have my left foot back, stick is in my left hand, it's covering my head. I always have my other hand here to protect my face. Step forward, temple or side of the neck, inside or front of the knee, face, orbit, side of the head, follow it, cover your head again, step forward, break their collarbone, drag the stick all the way across their body, switch it back to your right hand, come back to blood cup, and courtesy. Okay, so if you're a tongue sitter beginner, you're practicing that. Ideally, you'll find somebody in your house to practice it with. The best way to learn something is to teach it to someone else. Okay, so everybody else should remember that too because you're gonna have to do the same thing with the two sticks. Okay, so now two sticks. I want you, when we do this, we do this as a set and we hit the other person's stick. So I want you to think about what you're actually hitting on the person. Side of the head, ribs, other side of the head. Side of the head, ribs, other side of the head. And then we do it again. And then we bring them here. Okay, here I am hitting the knee. Knee, other side of the knee, knee. They shouldn't still be standing at this point, but just in case, I take the other leg. Okay, so I'd like you to practice this with somebody. Um, you can do it with a stick, but you're just touching, okay? If they don't trust you, use a noodle or use a pencil, okay? So I want you to see where on the person you're hitting. Right here, temple, okay? Ribs. This can either be temple again or ribs again. Same thing, one, two. This third one can either come across at head height or at body height. And then when you do these, don't hit anybody's knee, but put your stick there. One, two. So the first two are both hitting the same side of the knee. And the third one, one, two, 
comes back and hits the other side. One, two, three. Okay, so I want you to do this with the body there. If whatever the body in your house is, you may absolutely not hit me with your sticks. Do it with pencil. Noodles if you have it. Fingers work fine. But I want you to see where the actual targets are on somebody because we tend to do these against each other's sticks and it just becomes a dance with the sticks and you're not thinking about what you're hitting. Okay, basic bow form one. We've been all the way through it plenty of times. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus on what we're hitting. Okay, so first move, you're making sure somebody stays at a distance from you and you're coming down and breaking their collarbone. New attacker coming from there, we're gonna turn into them, hit them in the ribs, step forward, hit them in the ribs on the other side. Somebody's attacking your knee. You're gonna pull your knee back out of the way, bring the bow down, swing it across so that it pushes their bow out of the way. Step forward, drop the front end down, break their collarbone. Groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. They try to hit you with their bow, lean back so that you're out, further out of range, sweep their bow out of their hand, stab them in the ribs. Same thing on the other side. You turn to look, somebody's coming at your knee, lock the knee. Step into Chinkle Chopsy, break their collarbone. Groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. Then they come at you with the bow, sweep their bow out of their hand, stab them in the ribs. New attacker, somebody coming at you from this direction with the bow. Same thing, sweep it out of the way, stab. They're backing up, stab, stab. I'm gonna bring this over the top and hit them, depending on how tall they are, okay? I could be hitting them in the side of the neck here or the ribs, or I could even, in the form, the bow stays here, but I could even bring it down and hit them in the knee. The next move is just because it looks cool as far as I'm concerned. Okay, we're here and we come back. Now there's somebody behind this. I'm going to stab them and pull the bow back out. Now I look and they're still back there. So I'm gonna turn to them, break the collarbone, groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. I look, somebody's attacking me overhead. <clears throat> I block. Okay, in the form, we're actually telling you to bring the bow way out to the side as if someone is attacking your knee. What I want you to think about from a self-defense point of view, if I block here, I can hit the inside of their knee here and the inside of their other knee. Okay, so when you're doing the form, it needs to be here, but just like all other forms, you can change up your interpretation a little bit. Okay, then I'm gonna bring my bow in. This is a chamber. I look, someone's behind me. I'm gonna take this end of the bow and hit them with it. And then I'm gonna come back. Bow comes over the top, right hand end hits. Okay, so I want you to do the same thing. I want you to do that a couple more times. And if you can find somebody in your house who is willing to be your crash test dummy, if for, for lack of a better word, do this with the target. Don't hit them, but see where on that person your bow would actually hit. Okay, black belt bow form. Again, we're thinking about targets, what we're protecting on ourselves or what we're hitting on someone else. So we start here, this is just to get your bow. And I'm gonna step back. Somebody's, I step back, someone goes to hit that leg with it, their stick or a kick. This would be longer, it would come almost to the floor. I'm just keeping my weight centered. I don't wanna shift into that one because if they hit, I don't want all my weight there to get hit. Okay, I'm gonna protect that knee and then I'm gonna protect this knee. Then I'm gonna bring the bow over and hit someone in their collarbone. They're gonna step back and try to hit me again, I'm gonna block. So when I block, my bow needs to be at an angle here so their bow doesn't hit my head and slides down. Ribs, attack coming from that side block, hit their ribs, stab. Same thing on the other side, block, ribs, stab. Attack coming from that side block. I'm going to switch my hand and bring the top end over and hit their ribs. Pull it up. Take their head. Stab the throat. Pose over the dead body. 
Probably not, but it just seems appropriate there. Okay, so I want you to practice that a bunch of times. And again, if you can put a body there so you can see what you're hitting, give the body a stick so that you have something to block and know what you're hitting with each strike. 